you might have used uh, methyl orange in your laboratory because it's a very common uh, indicator for acid base titrations it looks uh, orange in its solid form it's like this it's an azo dye what what do you mean by azo dye i will explain and uh, it it has these orange crystals but if you dissolve it it ha can have um either red or yellow color or maybe orange so so it's like when you take um, acidic medium highly acidic medium it's red and then as uh, the medium gets a little bit more basic not basic still acidic like the ph range is 3.1 to 4.4 so 3.1 at 3.1 it's red and then it gets kind of uh, orangish and then it gets yellow so this change in color happens because it has a, an acidic hydrogen which can get released at 3.47 pKa of methyl orange itself is 3.47 we will see how this can happen but before we need to see what the molecule what's the molecular formula of methyl orange is so methyl orange looks like uh, this this is the molecule of methyl orange at first sight it might look very complicated but uh, you can break it down you can see this uh, azo di linkage here and in double bond and uh, two rings conjugated that is extended conjugation but uh, let's first break it up into the parts this part here you can see as uh, an dimethyl aniline the para position of which has been attacked by a benzene diazonium ion the para position of this one has been attacked by a benzene diazonium ion of the aniline of this kind of an aniline with a, an SO3H group attached here. So this will be called sulfanilic acid because this is aniline and sulfonic acid together. So common name is sulfanilic acid. So you and then you can take a little bit of base also. You can take a little bit of base also to remove this hydrogen here you can get uh, this whole molecule okay so pretty easy After, now we can see that how this molecule is um, made up of simple other units so let's see the preparation which goes like this you can take the sulfanilic acid with some base a mild base will do because this is a very good acid as you can see if this H gets released the minus at O will be shared by two other oxygens so you do that and then now you can diazotize this NH2 group so for that you will have to take of course HNO2 which is prepared in situ uh, by taking NaNO2 and HCl so you take NaNO2 and HCl you get HNO2 and HNO2 will uh, get dehydrated to form nitrosonium ion so HNO2 molecule should look like this of course and H plus will attack here and then a good living group water will get removed and then you get nitrosonium ion the name is nitrosonium ion it's not nitronium ion nitrosonium because nitronium ion is like this it has another one more oxygen nitrosonium ion has one nitrogen and one oxygen only so nitrogen is in its lower valency here nitrogen is in plus five oxidation state here you can see it's in plus three but you might have noticed that I did something here the water molecule got released and uh, I also send this lone pair here if I didn't send this lone pair of nit oxygen here I would have written oxygen with two lone pairs and N positive which is also a resonating structure of nitrosonium ion which can be used but uh, i prefer this because this is more stable resonating structure the oxygen positive at the oxygen not at the nitrogen sorry so here you have a lone pair at oxygen you have positive so this way in its more stable resonating form i have written in some textbook you can see that nitrosonium ion has been mentioned like this because this is not so stable form but it also captures one thing that it always attacks from the N side not from the O side because from the O side oxygen can't make four bonds right so some textbook will be using for nitrosonium ion this resonating structure both of them are fine you can take both 
but do understand that it will attack from the end side. So this nitrosonium ion will now attack from the end side on this aniline. So you can say that the aniline is at attacking or the <laughs> nitrosonium group. So some of my students in my classroom always say which one is attacking, which species is attacking which one. And I can say you can see in both ways. <laughs> Funny. And so you see this lone pair will get donated and uh, you will get something like this. This is not so stable. This proton will get released, right? And then you will get N nitroso. So at nitrogen, you have a nitroso group. So this is N nitroso aniline derivative. Now you can have acid catalyzed automerization. So this H from here, it will go to here and the double bond will shift. And you can use a little bit of uh, common sense to make it look more beautifully done. So you can, as the medium is acidic, we are using acid catalyzed automerism. So H plus not from here, you take an H plus from the medium and join it here. And then you have a, a positive on oxygen and then you know you can now shift this hydrogen so this lone pair will get uh, sorry this bond pair will shift here and this these bond this pi electrons will shift there yeah and then you get this thing and as you see this thing you again you see this uh, at the, in this group the hydrogen is acidic a little bit so you can and the medium is also acidic okay so not the acidic hydrogen you can see this OH group sorry alcohol group which can get dehydrated very easily so acid catalyzed dehydration this H plus is going to attack there and then it will form this and then one H2O will be removed and then you get this benzene diazonium ion right this is benzene diazonium ion and you can see here also I have used a better resonating structure somebody could have just shown it like this uh, like minus h2o and some textbook might write it like uh, so3 minus let's say here but here n double bond n and a positive like this but you know that the better resonating structure will be like this because it will have one more bond which is which has been made here but again the same thing it will not attack from this nitrogen it will attack from this nitrogen because nitrogen can't make and make five bonds so some simple but very interesting stuff these things now you have to react the diazonium ion with nn dimethyl aniline so you take this nn dimethyl aniline you can shift this back up here you can generate the delta positive here and you can attack it here and you can uh, take the these electrons from the pi system at this carbon here so you can get a positive charge here and simple electrophilic aromatic substitution para is activated in an in dimethyl aniline you have this plus i groups also and then plus r also from here so para is highly activated you join this group at para electrophilic aromatic substitution and you can get the the methyl orange molecule right so this is a methyl orange molecule. This has been made in slightly acidic kind of a situation, slightly uh, acidic kind of a situation, but still it is not taking this H plus because O minus is here quite stable. So I presume, let's say this pH is around uh, five. Okay, so we are above 4.4. So this is the yellow form, right? This is the yellow form of um, because nitrous acid, the situation with nitrous acid is uh, interesting. So I will have to presume that the, the pH is around 5, still acidic, but not too acidic. And then it is yellow. And when it changes color, it uh, will add one more H plus. You will have to add one more H plus. You will have to make the solution more acidic. So some H plus will... Um, go and attack the molecule at which side this is interesting oh, one lone pair is missing here i will write it down at but where so you can see it can attack here at this o minus at these nitrogens three of these nitrogens and that is for you to decide where so if you take an h here 
uh, at the O minus you get this molecule and if you take an H uh, at this nitrogen here you get this here is the H plus attacking and then you can have the H plus at this nitrogen here and uh, you can have a positive uh, H plus attacking at this nitrogen so you have these uh, four possibilities and which one is correct so if you see it like so separately then it will be very difficult to tell first of all uh, this O minus here is quite stable even if it's it's charged it's quite stable because it's being shared by three oxygens so H plus will not attack here you can check the pKa values and uh, you can then decide so this is what is happening that uh, the part this part will have to act as a base it will have to accept uh, uh, the H plus so you can check the pKb values and uh, from there you can understand which will be reacting first so this thing like self uh, what is it yeah this is like let's say H2SO4 we understand H2SO4 kind of a thing it has a pKa of uh, it has a Ka nearly infinite let's say 10 to the power 20 then its pKa is minus 20 then its pKb will be uh, the bisulfate ion which is uh, very much similar to this kind of a species here the bisulfate ion will have a pKb of how much so we know that uh, conjugate acid base pair their um, pKa and pKb add up to 14 so if this is minus 20 then this pKb is going to be 34 which is very small and it will not accept H plus that easily so it will be some nitrogen one of the nitrogens which will be taking up this H plus but which one so you can see the flow of electron very nicely in here can you see this lone pair getting conjugated here then this flow of electron here this flow of electron here and these electrons flowing here which means this nitrogen here right here has a lot of electron density you can also maybe see that there is some kind of conjugation here also that electrons are moving away from it also but if you move electrons away you will get two minus charges too, together which is not so preferred two negative charges comes quite close to each other so this resonance will be the moving away of electrons from the nitrogen will be a weaker resonance and uh, the strengthening will be a good enough resonance no problem with that you can see so that way we can understand that uh, this nitrogen will get protonated this nitrogen here and you can show the flow of electrons so this nitrogen gets protonated but the plus charge comes at this nitrogen very interesting and this is the red form of the methyl orange molecule so it's it's the very sheer basics like how to move the electrons where from where to attack a, a, a species or an electrophile or a nucleophile these are the simple choice of organic chemistry i hope you find it interesting too when i was a, a student in my early 20 my early 20s no i would say like when i was 16 17 of age i used to enjoy these things too much and i hope you do enjoy these things also <laughs> thank you for watching